Rocky Hockey Show. I am the Rock Pig with my special guest, Mr. Liam McGuire from uh, Liam McGuire's Parts uh, Unknown. Parts Unknown. Okay, uh, I guess somebody wants another beer over there. So it looks like Ottawa pulled off one, five to four. Just want to talk a little bit about some hockey this afternoon. Okay, uh, somebody needs to go to the bathroom right underneath that sign that says Leafs suck. So uh, anyway, Ottawa wins five to four. John Paddock was fired earlier this week and something's been bugging me. Has there ever been in NHL history, as long as the All-Star game has been, a coach who coached in the All-Star game is gone by the end of the season? Has that ever happened? Liam, do you know? I, I think it happened once. I think uh, one that I'm aware of anyway, unless you're going to tell me you know the answer and there's two or three or four. Do you know of others? Or, I, I, I think possibly uh, Bill Gadsby with Detroit in 66-67. Uh, and he, he coached the season in Detroit and in the following year he was released after two games. The All-Star game was at the start of the season in those days. And oh, I, okay. I, I think that... Okay. Uh, okay. Now that's not 100% not positive on that. I'd have to research it, but that would be my best guess. Um, so the other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, uh, other than uh, John Paddock coming in, and, uh, and you were mentioning some people can't be a, a good bench boss, although they're good hockey people, uh, I, I'd say that's probably uh, no finer example than another gentleman in Ottawa, which is uh, Brian Kilray, who's a great bench boss for uh, the Ottawa 67s, and he actually uh, uh, spent some time up in the, uh, in the NHL trying to be a coach, and he just wasn't su successful there. Uh, some people can coach kids, some people can coach the millionaires. How different is that? Like, what, what, what kind of switch do you have to turn on or off when you're dealing with the millionaires or dealing with the kids? Obviously, there has to be a different mentality, or, or you can just cross-reference both ways. I'm looking at Brent Sutter now, who is having a banner season in New Jersey, although off to a slow start. Yep. But he's having a banner season now. He's got the guys working for him. But he was a phenomenal junior coach, and he's able to carry that over to the NHL. I would think that's more of a rarity than... Um, than most of the time can happen. I mean, that's, that's got to be rare. Well, uh, first of all, in the case of Brian Kilray, uh, he, he went up in 84, 85, 85, 86 to the Islanders as an assistant coach. He wasn't the head coach. And, and uh, frankly, my own personal opinion, he got screwed royally there. Okay. Uh, he, he did an outstanding job. And the problem was Terry Simpson had taken over for Al Arbor. And Terry Simpson was the assistant coach to Brian Kilray in the 19... Uh, 83 World Junior Hockey Championships and their relationship I think was solid but certainly you had a situation where a guy is his assistant and a couple years later the guy's your boss and when they let Brian go when he was released from his two-year contract they said he was too close to the players and the guy they replaced him with was Bobby Nystrom who had just retired so to anybody who knows the difference between a puck and a basketball at that time they knew right away that Brian Kilray got absolutely royally screwed. So that's what happened there. And he came back down and has continued with his legacy here in Ottawa and his, as you say, an excellent bench boss. In regards to Brent Sutter, Brent Sutter uh, was chief cook and bottle washer and Red Deer took the whole operation over and within 24 months had a Memorial Cup. Uh, after that, he could barely keep a team over 500, you know, because in junior hockey with the turnover, it's very, very difficult to stay at or near the top. And no better example than that than the London Knights, who have been one of the strongest teams in junior hockey the last three or four years. But Sutter's legacy grew in the World Junior Hockey Championships. And especially when he opted out of starting with New Jersey this summer until he could complete the, uh, the Super Series That's right. with the juniors against the Russians. That showed a lot of class. And now he's got New Jersey going pretty good. It's more like Martin Brodeur's got Martin Brodeur going pretty good. Because if you've got a great goalie, you can look like a pretty good coach. Well, I think Brent Sutter's a hell of a coach, and he'll do a hell of a job. And he will, uh, I hopefully will coach Canada in 2010 in Vancouver. But um, different strokes are different folks. It is a different thing with the kids and going up. And Brian Kilray was offered the head coaching position of the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1989 by George Armstrong. He turned it down. It was mid-season. He made the right move at that time. 
that was his last kick at the can for getting an opportunity to go back up. So he never really got a chance. But I think he would have done as equally as good a job in the NHL why had did, he got a chance. Why did he turn it down? He, he turned it down because it was mid-season. The Leafs were floundering. Harold Ballard had, had, uh, was, was, was on the verge of passing away. Uh, the whole, the whole, the, the member, the, the fans were wearing paper bags over their heads going to the rink. It was a gong show for 10 years there, and it would have been detrimental to his career, and he recognized that, you know. So he turned them down, and uh, John Brophy had just been there recently, and the Leafs were an interim guys trying to take over. So it was a real mess. That was his last uh, job that he was offered in the NHL. But uh, had he been given a head coaching job in the NHL anywhere, I think we would have seen he would have done a good job. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I, I hadn't uh, realized that he was uh, shafted in the, uh, in the island. I just thought that he had a hard time dealing with the millionaires. I don't know. Uh, it's a different mentality. Yeah, and, but yeah, he was, he was screwed over pretty good. Now, I noticed you're wearing the number nine pin there, Montreal Canadiens. Uh, yeah. So any, uh, any reason why today? You haven't worn it uh, prior to this. No. Uh, I, I'm sure there's a story behind it. <laughs> you care to enlighten us? It's not much of one. I tried to bring good luck to my son today. We got beat out in the playoffs by Orleans. My son wears number nine. Ah. And uh, so I got our sweater on, Osgood Rito uh, Senators. We lost to Orleans in the fifth game there today. So they advance, and uh, that's why I wore it today. But I'm a huge fan of Rocket Richard, greatest goal scorer in the history of the sport of hockey. And, uh, you know, had the chance to interview him actually in November of 1989. And I, I met him a couple of times, and, and uh, it was an inspiration every time to shake his hand. Speaking of, uh, of legends, um, and you say that uh, he's the uh, greatest goal scorer of all time, uh, Bobby Orr, who's also one of the greatest goal scorers of all time, had a chance to, uh, to uh, participate in a uh, fan uh, spectacle, if you will, in Vancouver in the first intermission. I, uh, did you get a chance to catch that? Yeah. Where this gentleman from uh, Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, a uh, sawmill worker, was given the opportunity to throw a bunch of pucks into the net at different levels of the ice. Uh, him and his three friends had to get uh, at least 15 pucks in so that everybody on the ice and the guy in the stands could get a, a hybrid vehicle from Chevrolet. And then this guy had to go across the ice from the other blue line and throw 15 pucks in 24 seconds across the ice and into that net. Bobby Orr coached him on that. <laughs> and he did it. Now, what do you think about spectacles where fans are, are, are involved in something like that? I mean, there's obviously it's a marketing uh, standpoint uh, for actually Malibu uh, Chrysler and stuff like that. But this guy's like hero for, you know, he's got his 15, months, uh, 15 plus minutes of fame ahead of him now. This guy is on to, uh, like, he doesn't have to go to the sawmill on Monday, that's no. for sure. <laughs> what do you think of that? Well, I thought it was outstanding. It was absolutely phenomenal. And, uh, you know, Bobby Orr's been involved with this program since it started because of his association with General Motors. And he seemed to take on a little bit more of an active role this time. I think the guy solicited a little bit more from Bobby, and Bobby was happy to give it. I don't know if that was by design or, or uh, just Bobby being Bobby. But uh, Bobby really wasn't, I mean, as a defenseman, he scored 270 goals in his career, including 46 in one season, which is second to Paul Coffey's 48, 85, 86. He broke Bobby's record. But uh, he was more known as a passer, obviously, and, uh, and a setup guy. But, but uh, this was something that's, that's, if anyone's ever had a chance to be on the ice, I do it all the time. I go out on the ice before practice with the kids, and I'm always way down the far end of the ice. I always take five or six pucks, and I shoot them late in the ice. Usually get three or four in. Um, what, what the guy did was, was spectacular, given the pressure, and, and given what was on the line. I love, you know, he's, he's, he's paying off his mortgage. You know, he's taking, he's put, taking care of his kids' education. He works in a sawmill. How much better does it get? Yeah. Any young fan, you know, kicked a field goal there a couple years ago, the Great Cup, won a million, whatever. Uh, Wendy's, you know, yeah. A whole lot better to say the fan trying to jump in the Buffalo Sabre bench or the Quebec Nordic <laughs> bench and, and, uh, and, and fight, fight guys on the team. It looks a whole lot better than that. So this was a spectacular thing. And I think any time you got Bob Yore involved in anything, it's a win-win. He's the greatest hockey player of all time. And, and his, his name is just sheer, absolute, iconic stature. So Absolutely. anything, in my view, he's involved in is great. Uh, I have to wholeheartedly agree with you there. As a, as a Boston Bruins fan, and Bobby Orr made me the Bruins fan, I am. Believe me, I've been through some tough, tough years. Anyway, we're going to wrap things up for now. Take a bit of a break. 